welcome to Faith Revolution Church online service. So glad that you can be a part of our service today. I say welcome. But more importantly, let's welcome our Father in heaven into our midst as we pray together. Father, thank you for this glorious day that you have made. Indeed, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father in heaven, King of glory, the creator of all things, we are here before you this day to worship you, O God, in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that you accept, O God, our worship today in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in everything we will do, we pray, Lord, that your name be glorified. We pray, Heavenly Father, that indeed today, that you would touch each and every one of our lives in a special way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Be glorified, be magnified, be exalted, O God. Come and take your place. For in Jesus' mighty and awesome name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. If this is the first time you are worshiping with us, I say welcome. And I pray that indeed you will meet with the Lord in a special way in the name of Jesus. What are we going to do today? The Faith Revolution Church Worship Band will lead us in praise. After that, we will pray together. After that, the word that God wants us to hear will be delivered to us. And in all things, the reason why we're doing all of this is that God be glorified and that we together fellowship with each other, even though we're in a virtual environment, we're still fellowshipping with each other, even as we fellowship with the Most High God. So I just want you to put your heart into it as we worship God today. First, let's turn it over to the FRC Worship Band as the minister in praise. Over to you, FRC Worship Band.
Mountain you won't climb up coming after me Snow wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down coming after me King is always beautiful. And I pray and I encourage you to never let praise stop from your lips. Let it always flow from you daily. And you will see how your heart would always be lifted up in God. Amen. Next, we're going to pray together. And the format of our prayer is that as I lead us in prayer, I want you to pray along. I want you to insert your own prayer points as we pray along. We're going to pray for specific themes today. And I want it to be that indeed, God in heaven will hear our voice, will hear our prayer and answer us from heaven on high. So even as we pray, the word of God says in Psalm chapter 100, verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We have praised God today. Well, I want you to now praise God in your own way and thank him for what he has done, what he is doing, and what you know that he will do in your life. So let's just first go before God with a prayer of thanksgiving. Let's just bow our heads and even begin to approach the throne of grace with a grateful heart and say to our Father in heaven, thank you, because God is everything to us. Father, indeed, you are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all adoration. And Father, we come before you this day, O oh God, with a grateful heart for all that you have done for us. Lord God Almighty, you have been our provider. Daily, O oh God, you've been providing all that we need. For this, we are so grateful. Lord, you are our protector. Heavenly Father, wherever, O oh God, we have been, you have kept us safe, O oh God. You have kept us under your opinions, O oh God, according to your word. For this, Father, we are 
grateful for each and every one of our lives oh god you know what we need even before we ask of you and father you meet us at the point of our needs for this father we say thank you say thank you for answer prayers we say thank you because you are always working on our behalf you are always doing great things in our lives heavenly father for this we are saying thank you as your children we recognize that you are always moving heavenly father and for this we are eternally grateful be lifted high, be magnified, be exalted, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen and amen. Next, I want you to consider that as a child of the living God, you are saved. Amen. I pray in heaven that indeed you are saved. But you know what? You did not save yourself. God saved you. I want you to consider those around you and if you are not born again, I want you to consider yourself. That indeed, the way God moves in the lives of those he saves, he is able to move in the life of the unsaved, to bring them to him. But God requires one thing of us as children. To plant the seed of his word and to water it in the lives of people, and God will grant the increase. Well, for now, I want us to pray. That what you have in Christ, which is eternity in Christ, salvation in Christ, that it be so for other people. So I want you to bow your head and consider those that are not born again. And if it is your own self, consider your own self and go before the living God and say, Father, in your might, save souls all around in the name of Jesus. And if you are praying for yourself, say, Father. I receive you today. Save my soul. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Save my soul. And as you pray for others as well, just by name, mention those you know in your heart of heart that you want them to be saved. And ask God to come into their life and do his saving work in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, King of glory, you are the one, O oh God, who is able to save. You are the one, O oh God, who is able to touch a life. Your hands are always outstretched to the unsaved. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will prompt, O oh God, those that are not saved, O oh God, to reach out and take your hand, O oh God. Heavenly Father, your sacrifice of our, the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is for all people. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord. That our loved ones, those around us, those that are not saved, like Lord God Almighty, that you have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God, and prompt their heart, O oh God, to reach out to you, to accept your word, to accept you as Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, let salvation of souls, O oh God, let it come unto lives all around in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And as we continue to seek God's face today, I want you to pray a prayer for your own self. And the anchor verse for that is Daniel chapter 5 verse 12. Daniel chapter 5 verse 12, where it is stated that Daniel was found in Daniel, what? The spirit of excellence. And the spirit of excellence enabled Daniel to do excellently in everything that he laid his hands to. He was an advisor to so many kings because of the excellent spirit. When we now go to verse 14 of the same Daniel chapter 5, we now saw that excellent spirit in Daniel was now recorded as the spirit of God. That brought about that excellent spirit. So I want you to pray for yourself for an excellent spirit, for the spirit of the Most High God to fill you up, for the spirit of the Most High God to guide you. So as you bow your heads with me right now, just pray that Father, let this an excellent spirit be found in me the same way it was found in that Daniel. Oh God, let your spirit, your Holy Spirit, fill me up. Let your Holy Spirit guide me in all my ways. Let your Holy Spirit help me, O oh God, to be excellent in all that I do. 
everything I lay my hands on for it to be excellently done. That, O oh God, in the works of my hand, Heavenly Father, let it be excellent. In my family, O oh God, let me, O oh God, be an excellent husband, an excellent father, an excellent brother, an excellent one, O oh God, before you, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in my business, O oh God, let me do excellently in the name of Jesus. Let all that I do glorify you. Let all that I do yield its increase in my life, in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of excellence be upon my life, upon every life, upon everyone who has prayed concerning this right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. In the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 23, Paul says something to keep the faith, to keep the faith, to continue in faith. I want us to pray for ourselves. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for the church. I want you to pray for others. I want us to pray collectively that the living God will help us to continue in faith, to never lose hope. There are so many things that, that bring the, uh, discouragement all around us, but we will keep the faith. So as you bow your heads with me, say to the living God, that Father, help me to keep the faith, to continue in faith, to grow in faith, O God, doing exploits in your name, in the name of Jesus. Let it be, O God, that for each and every one of us, you will help us, O God, to keep the faith. That we would not be discouraged, we will not be dismayed, O God. We will not be afraid, but we will, be, we will act in faith, we will act in truth continuously in the name of Jesus. Father, regardless of God of the obstacles, regardless of what we see out there, Heavenly Father, we remain in faith, not by our own strength, but by your strength in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak faith into our lives, increasing faith day by day, increasing in faith, never losing hope. Heavenly Father, let that be our portion in the name of Jesus. Help us, Father, to keep the faith, to never lose hope in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. In the book of John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 27, our Lord and Savior said one thing. He said, my peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. The peace that is in Christ. That peace, what does it do in our lives? It removes every form of anxiety, every form of stress, every form of mental discomfort. We're just at peace. We're just at peace. I want you to pray to the living God as you bow your heads with me right now and say, Father, you have given me your peace. Let your peace, O oh God, be made manifest in me in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, help me to overcome every form of anxiety, every form of stress, every form of worry, O oh God. Lord God Almighty, let it never be my portion anymore in the name of Jesus. Let peace, O oh God, the peace of Christ, O oh God, be upon my very life continuously in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Finally, I want you to pray for the fullness of joy. Not half joy, not three quarters joy, not 99% joy, but fullness of joy. In the presence of the King, in the presence of God is fullness of joy. We are in God's presence. Let us pray for fullness of joy because that is God's blessing upon us this year, this year, 2021. We are going to continuously live in fullness of joy. So as you bow your heads with me right now, just as the living God, Lord, make my joy full. Bring, oh God, my way, fullness of joy. Lord God Almighty, we stand in your presence right now, oh God. We bow before your holy throne right now, oh God. For indeed, in your presence is fullness of joy. Father, help us, oh God. To have full joy in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, let nothing steal our joy. Let nothing take our joy away in the name of Jesus. That we may live continuously in fullness of joy. All to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
And Lord, we give you all the glory. We thank you, O oh God, for every prayer point we've raised right now before you. We thank you, O oh God, because we know you have heard us. And Lord, I specifically thank you for every prayer point that everyone out there has raised for themselves. Heavenly Father, we join our faith together right now that indeed it is so for everyone in the name of Jesus. Do that that only you can do, O oh God. Lord God Almighty, lift us up, O oh God, even as you are lifted up. Be, O oh God, be magnified, be exalted. There is no one like you. You are the only living God. You are the one who was, who is, and is to come. You are the creator of all things. O oh God Almighty, there's no shadow of turning in you. You are full of righteousness. O oh God Almighty, you are God forever, and you are our Father. You are everything to us. We lift you high. We magnify you this day. We exalt you, O oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, O oh God, in all things. For in Jesus' mighty and awesome name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for praying with me. And even as you pray daily, continue to remember these prayer points that you may continuously pray it over your life. To have a spirit of excellence. To never, to never lose faith. To always be at peace. To always be filled with joy. And shall be well with you in Jesus name. Again I say welcome to this service. I pray that as we have started with praise. As we have continued in prayer. That indeed your heart is lifted up. Next we are going to partake of the word of God. But before that I want to ask one thing of you. That if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, that you should please do so and turn on the bell icon so you are notified every time we load a new video. I also want you to like our videos and comment on them as much as possible. And most importantly, share it with those around you. That we may all grow in the Lord together and shall be well with us in Jesus' name. And as a church, Faith Revolution Church, we're always glad when you connect directly with us. So I want you to go on our website, faithrevolution.ca, faithrevolution.ca, to see all about us on there. And if you want to connect with me directly, send me an email, pastor at faithrevolution.ca, and I'll be sure to respond to you. Amen. Right now, the vessel that God has prepared to deliver the word of God is ready for us. I want to hand it over to Pastor Derry as she ministers to us in the Word today. Over to you, Pastor Derry. Hi, everyone. My name is Derry Bello, and I'm going to be sharing the Word of God with you today. Before we jump into the Word, um, let us just even take a short prayer. Everlasting Father, ancient of days, I am that I am King Almighty. We just want to thank you. We ask that as we come before you to delve deep into your Word. We invite the Holy Spirit to be the teacher here, to speak, to cancel, to show us the mind of God, to reveal the truth of God, even through his word. Everlasting Father, let this word be of impact in our lives. Let it be transformational um, to our circumstances and that you alone might take all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is part of a two-part series. Um, if you missed last week, last week we talked about understanding traps. And we took our reading um, from Psalm 124. And this is the second part of the series, which is all around avoiding and deliverance from traps. So to kick us off, I would like to take us back to you know our reading um, for this series. And I read from the Bible, from Psalm 124, verse 7. I read from the book of Psalms, chapter 124, verse 7. And I read, Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us a spray to be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The trap is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We also took a reading from Psalm 91, verse 3. And I read, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of a fowler. Before we jump into the second part of the series, uh, I just want to do a very, very short recap of what we talked about last week. 
and you know we talked about really understanding traps and we tried to delve into this this whole essence of the snare of the fowler understanding the the persona of the fowler and understanding the nature of snares we also helped us um understand that snares are the same thing as traps um we did a bit of an uh what what it means to be trapped um out the snare will be like an um more of an old English type of definition. Um, and in modern context now, you know, you could basically inter change the word snare for traps. Then we also delved into like the characteristics um, and operations of snares. We delved into four different characteristic operations of snares. We talked about the fact that they can be deceitful and they can be deceiving. And we took an example from Genesis chapter three, verse one, how the serpent deceived the woman to eat from the tree of life. We also said it could be hidden and it could be concealed in its true nature and we took uh, you know an example from joshua chapter 9 verse 3 about how the gibeonites eat their true nature and camouflaged who they were um, as a way of getting joshua to get into contracts and covenants with them we also talked about also with traps and snares how sometimes it's set up with a bait and we gave an example of how satan when he was tempting christ was trying to bait him and said, you know what, you know, if you do ABC, you know, I will give you the entire world. I'll give you all of this. Um, so, and that was in Matthew chapter four. And I think we also talked about finally how snares and traps can be limiting. Now, I know that is a very quick flashby summary of last week in all of four minutes, but truly, if you want to, if you want to listen and, you know, um, if, if you want to if you want to catch up on last week i would invite you to check out the video um avoiding um, understanding traps which we've posted on our youtube link and while you're at it please subscribe to the channel okay now for today like i said we'll be delving into the second part of uh of our teaching which is really all around the avoiding and the deliverance i think we did such a deep study of the understanding so we're talking all about avoiding. Can traps and snares truly be avoided? Hmm. I kind of think maybe. Um, it really depends on the type of trap. Um, and that would help us understand, you know, what would be the way to avoid it, or maybe in some instances, be delivered from it. And so in very, very broad definition, we can examine, you know, how the traps get triggered as a way of understanding how to avoid it. I hope that makes sense. Um, and what do I mean? Different things trigger different traps and the avoidance is frankly dependent on the trigger, right? Because then you know what's going to trigger it so you know if you can truly avoid the trap. Now, the first type of classification i would like to put out there is what i will call traps that are self-triggered so we kind of like are the ones that trigger the traps ourselves i think for this classification of traps i would categorically say yes these traps can be avoided self-triggered traps can definitely be avoided now what really is the genesis of the trigger um, there are many triggers, but I'm going to use two broad classifications of what triggers the traps. The first piece that triggers traps is usually temptation leading to sin. And the second piece that also triggers a trap is usually what I would like to call, um, I want to make sure I'm getting it, refusing and forgetting to ask the counsel of God. So taking a step back, I just want to recap what I just said very quickly. Yes, you can avoid a trap if it is self-triggered. So under the categorization of traps that are self-triggered, we have two big, two big triggers that causes, frankly, these traps to put in place. The first is temptation leading to sin. The second is forgetting or ignoring God's counsel. Let us start with the first, which is temptation leading to sin. You know, it is one thing to be tempted. It is another thing to allow the temptation to overcome. 
Christ himself was tempted. We talked about last week. You know, Satan was trying to tempt him. But we all also know the response Christ made. Christ said, get thee behind me, Satan. So it's very, very important we understand that when we're being tempted, what is the right thing for us to do? What does the Bible say about this? And I read from the word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The Bible says as concerning temptation, remember, it is temptation leading to sin. But it is not always that temptation leads to sin. Christ was an example of someone that was tempted, but he did not allow the temptation to lead to sin. The Bible says as concerning temptations in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with temptation, he will also make the way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. Honest, this verse says it all. We all deal with temptation, but there's a promise from the word of God that God will not allow you and I to be tempted beyond what we are able. And that even in the midst of the temptation, he will make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. So the first strategy for escaping traps, traps that are particularly of a self-triggered type, is what I call the resist and the flee strategy. And we can see the resist and the flee strategy within God's word in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The assurance that for every temptation that comes your way, my way, we will not be tempted beyond what we're able. That is the resist. And it will make a way of escape. That is the flee. God has given us the grace to resist. God has given us a way of escape. Now, let us delve deeper into God's word and, you know, show true examples on how do you truly First of all, see the early warning signs of when this temptation is coming. And let us examine from individuals in the Bible what they did when they read the signals. Okay. Now, I want to talk to two case studies. My first case study is a very popular one. And the minute I mention it, you're like, yeah, I get it. I can see everything link up, link up now. It is the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Okay. And we can get the story from Genesis chapter 39 from verse 6, verse 23, okay? We know the story of Potiphar's wife. You know, when Potiphar wasn't around, Potiphar's wife tried to lure Joseph into her bed, you know? And the thing though is, there were signs of an early indication of what Potiphar's wife was about to do. The Bible says in verse 7 of Genesis chapter 39, and I read, it says, it came to pass that after these things, that the master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and she said lie with me <laughs> sorry I'm a girl so I had to kind of like giggle at the longing eyes so you know the girl's like giving him the eye I'm like hey, hey check me out all that piece you know and of course when you know he started with the high and then she's like come lie with me the signal was there everything was there for Joseph to understand that oh my gosh I might be caught up in a compromising situation and the word of God helps us understand that in Genesis chapter 39, if you read the story, that Joseph did not succumb to that longing eye. Joseph did not succumb to that direct invitation. Frankly, Joseph ran to the point that he let go of his, you know, his coat or his jacket and he fleed. You know, so you could see him resisting the longing eyes and you could actually see him fleeing and running off okay that is a case of an example of someone you know that is um of all someone that we see as an example a man of god you know from the old testament joseph having to deal with temptation resisting and fleeing it and so therefore not falling into the trap of the enemy 
we will still come back to the story. The second case study, which I would like to share, we mentioned it last week, and it is the story of David and Bathsheba. And we can get that story in 2 Samuel chapter 11. And it's a very different story here. Now, the Bible helps us understand in verse 1, when the Bible was painting the story of that situation, you know, the exact what it says, the Bible says it was the time that kings were supposed to go to work. So that is the first piece that you understand a case of the resist piece, that there was something that was a norm at that point in time. And the norm was kings were not supposed to be hanging out. They were supposed to be at war. Now, where was David? It was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Again, part of us understanding the resist and flee strategy is also ensuring that we resist falling into finding ourselves in the wrong places at the wrong time. When you should be when you should be studying, you're maybe hanging out with peer peers that influence you negatively, you know, are making you do things you shouldn't do. Oh, take a glass of wine, take a shot, you know, throw down five shots, or oh, smoke a joint. If I want to be very, very practical about this, within this normality of where we are right now, you know. The same also, even you know, even with people that are not necessarily young or older people, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. When you should be home, maybe as a father um, with your kids, you know, but then you're, you know, you're going out with the boys at night, hanging out in places. David was doing exactly that. So already his ability to resist was compromised by the fact that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Remember, we're talking about how do we avoid the triggers, particularly in the area of temptation leading to sin, when we can be the ones triggering the trap ourselves. Making sure your ability to resist is also dependent on you, frankly, being in the right place at the right time and not being where God does not want you to be. Anyway, David was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Bible puts it in this beautiful story. The Bible has a lot of beautiful stories. So I hope, you know, and I digress it. I hope you're taking the time to really just, you know, even if it's simpler versions, message version that is simpler English, for you to just read these beautiful stories. But the story puts it this way that, you know, the dude was walking around his palace. Hey, remember, it was the king at that point in time. He had this palace. He was walking on the roof of the palace. And I can imagine the roof gives you an amazing aerial view. And while walking on the roof of the palace, he saw a woman bathing. Now, the Bible doesn't say the details, but I don't take my bath. And I'm sure women don't take your baths, male or female. Nobody takes their baths with our clothes off. So obviously she was naked. And so he sees the girl. And <laughs> the funny thing is, this is what he says. Second Samuel 11, 2. I got to read this to you. He says, one evening, David got up from his bed, walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. Now, we have seen early indications of the situation. Wrong place at the wrong time. He sees the woman he says the woman is beautiful. We see Joseph has no thoughts about what the woman la looks like. He just flees. David is in a different place right now. He is checking out the woman. And he is be checking her out enough to be able to assess and say she is beautiful. I'm just being very pragmatic here. And you know, saying it exactly as it, as it is, you know. Now, the second piece is... The woman was very beautiful. The next line say, and David sent someone to find out about her. The minute David checked her out, that she was beautiful, it means, first of all, his assessment of the situation was not on a resist. It was already taking a step to really absorb the circumstances. Now, the flee option flew out of the window the minute Dave told someone to find out about her like and that, you know you see joseph fleeing and you see david diving deep in into the situation and i just wanted to use those two stories to help you truly understand you know what the resist and the flee strategy when it comes to temptation leading to sin i know it was examples of women but i just wanted to help us understand that this is not just tied to examples you know with men um resisting women there are times also we fall into temptation leading to sin 
from other sources, you know. The Bible helps us understand in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. And I read, it says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. You see, that's not an example with a woman. So this is those also desiring to be rich. Fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And I just wanted to share this Bible verse so it, it, it won't seem like, you know, the examples I'm sharing are just one track within the scenario of man and woman. People also fall into temptation and snare as a result of the love of money, as a result of the desire to be rich at all costs. And there are times, you know, those are things that are glaring. There are times also when temptation really does not look that glaring and it is very, very subtle. And in those instances, we truly need the Holy Spirit to help us discern what is really happening so that we can flee. To help us see beyond what the enemy has put out, that that is deceptive, so that we can flee. Remember, we talked about it last week. The devil also drives an agenda of, you know, causing us to fall into temptation through offense, through anger, um, through uh, bitterness. And some of those things come in very, very subtle way. They don't come from people that are unbelievers. They come from people that are believers like ourselves. Sometimes they come from family members. Sometimes they come from brothers. Sometimes they come from sisters. Sometimes they come from pastors, from men of God, people you look up to in the kingdom. Man and wife are home. Offense also happens. Sometimes you might find yourself in a really bad place with your spouse and where you are now struggling to talk to your spouse for days we should not allow the devil to creep in we should not allow the devil to creep in these are all snares we need to ensure that we employ a resist and a flee strategy okay we know first corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 verse 2 tells us that let him that think he stands take heed lest he fall lest he fall so in summary of the resist and flee strategy, as I like to call it, you resist and flee through grace. You know, you resist and flee by speaking and knowing God's word. Psalm 119 verse 110 says, The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. This is the psalmist saying they, that I can see the snares that they've laid for me. But guess what? I am not straying from your word. So in all speaking the word, in all knowing the word, we can also use that to resist the snare of the enemy. That was what Christ did. He kept saying, it is written. It is written. He was able to resist using the word of God. You can also resist and flee by obtaining strength from the Lord. Now, we have talked still within the context of the self-triggered how to avoid snares, you know, that we trigger through temptation leading into sin. Now, the second piece which I talked about was refusing and forgetting to ask for God's counsel. So many times, many, many times, we rush into decisions without asking for counsel from God. The Holy Spirit has been given to you and I to be our guide, to be our teacher, to be our counselor. Take a breath and ask him for direction. Even when it seems to be so stupid, he like, this is normal. I don't need to ask. Just ask. Okay? Yes, the Lord has given us all wisdom and all knowledge and logic. You know, this is not us asking for the miraculous. This is not us. This is not this is not just this is not us praying for miracles for things that we can do. No. This is us just asking for guidance in every day decisions we fall into the trap when we're impatient and when we're at a haste we just forget ourselves we're in a rush we just want to make a decision you fall into the trap you fall sometimes into the trap when you're getting a lot of pressure to make a to make a decision in the minute um an example will be you know 
for the singles out there that are listening right now you know many people have been pressured into the wrong marriages because you know parents are like you need to get married you need to get married you need to get married and you're just so pressured and you're like i'm praying about it i'm praying about it and like how long do you want to pray for if, I'm not saying pray for one year, two years, three years. Yes, you have to be reasonable about it. But the peace is, let's just make sure we're hearing God's voice. And have a sureness in our heart that this is what God is leading, where God is leading us. And God can lead you through the voice, the still voice, through the Holy Spirit, through counsel of people, I'm um, sorry, through <laughs> holy counsel, I have to qualify that, and even through his word. Okay, so let's just make sure we're not falling into traps. We also sometimes rush and make decisions and make choices um and forget to ask god um the cancel for cancel when we're dealing with peer influence all my friends are doing it i'm just gonna do it this is not up for discussion frankly like everyone's doing it i'm just gonna do it it really isn't up for decision it's not up for discussion yeah it's it's what asking god for oh, god is this the right thing for me and sometimes you know you just get wrong cancel right i want to be very clear here okay wrong cancel doesn't just come from unbelievers air quotes wrong cancel can come from anyone and that is why we need the holy spirit to truly help us to um to know the truth and to discern the truth you know there was a story yes another story in the bible and you can find the story in first kings chapter 13 there was a story about a young prophet that honestly truly had God in him. And God had sent this young prophet to deliver a word to a king at that point in time that was a wicked king. And the name of that king was Jeroboam. And God had also instructed this young prophet that the minute you give this word, don't look left, don't look right, don't go back, don't eat, just go the other way. And so when he delivered the word, the word was really bad. The king wanted to engage him, wait, you know, talk to me, eat with me. Let's figure this out. And the young prophet remembered what God had told him. And he said, no, I have to go. On his way, an old prophet, yes, an old prophet met up with him, kind of like relayed him on his way. You know, and tried to invite him the same way the king had invited him to just, you know, stay, chill, eat, let's talk about this. And the old, the young prophet said the same thing, I have to go. But then the old prophet told a lie and said, oh, but God told me to tell you that you can wait and we can talk. And so this old prophet did not take the, sorry, this young prophet did not take the time to validate that. Is this old prophet saying the truth? What he did was, oh, because it was coming from an old prophet. And because, you know, the old prophet had said, oh, God also, you know, gave me a prophecy and said ABC. The young prophet fell in line and he followed the old prophet. And it, there, was, there was not a good ending to the story. I'm not going to tell you the details. You can go read it, but he didn't have a good ending. Now, that is someone in every form that looks like someone you should be listening to. It makes sense for a young prophet to listen to an old prophet. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying ignore people that God have put in your life that are, you know, spiritual parents, you know, that have the counsel of God. This is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, you know, there's a place of being fed fish and there's a place of learning to fish also and also knowing and learning to hear from God directly. That is who we are in Faith Revolution Church. That is what we believe in. We do not believe in creating dependency type of relationships uh, with us as leaders. But what we have been taught is to teach each person how to walk their paths with God, how to know God, how to hear God, how to live their life in faith. So this is just an example to help you understand that you can fall into the wrong castle at any point in time from anybody what you need to do is make sure that you yourself are checking in with God and asking God for his counsel so you can avoid those self-trigger traps. I know that was a bit long, but you can, you can read more about, the, from this, about this in 1 Kings chapter 13. So, again, very simple, 
The strategy to follow is called follow the leader strategy. Who is that leader? That leader is God. Let God be the one that leads you. Let God be the one that guides you. Let God be the one that orders your step. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Unless that word blew my mind today when the Holy Spirit brought it to me. He helped me understand that the way we walk is this. We make many decisions and every decision we make creates a my, uh, honest, multiple pathways and choices in our lives. But the one thing God has given you and I is still this ownership of choice. It says, I put before you life and death. Choose life. God will never take your choice from me. But every choice we make just creates another path. It creates another path. It creates another two-way path. It creates another three-way path. And along this path, the enemy is creating snares. The enemy is putting snares all the way along this path. Now, how do we ensure we do not fall into the wrong way? By following our leader, that is God. Like I said, when the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, it means that path, you know, might be dark, but he has put a light there already on the path so we can see ahead. And then he puts another light Another, la another lamp by our feet. So every step we put is highlighted by his word. Just so we do not run blind to those snares. Let us acknowledge him before every decision. Seek his input before every decision. And we can be sure he will straighten our paths. He will remove obstacles from our paths. Sa Proverbs, sorry. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to six, I believe this is the amplified version, puts it this way. It says, trust in, rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Verse six says, in all your way, know and acknowledge and recognize him and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. I really pray that for you, that every day you will learn to ask more. That Lord, you know, is this the right thing? Is this the wrong thing? What should I be doing? How should I be going? Um, what decision should I make? The Lord will guide you greatly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we talked about traps that we trigger ourselves from ourselves. We talked about how temptation leading to sin can be a trigger. We can, that can cause can can be a trigger that we can you know. <laughs> uh frankly um activate yes that's a better word we also talked about refusing to ask or forgetting to ask for counsel for god can also you know put us in places where we shouldn't be now original question can we avoid all traps there are some traps that only god can help us with I have to be very honest. There's some traps where we can't avoid on our own. You know, like with the self-trigger traps, God has given us the guideline. He has given us the word. We just need to follow his word, you know. But there are times when you're following God's word. You listen, you know, you, you believe you're listening. You know, you believe you're hearing his direction and you're still falling into the trap. I call those traps enemy triggered traps and that is the second you know set of traps we're going to be exploring to understand how do we avoid traps that are triggered by the enemy now because the enemy is truly truly like a roaring lion running up and down seeking for whom to devour he has no choice is key strategy is just to keep putting all the stuff all around us every direction just waiting for a way to derail your destiny and my prayer for you is that your destiny my destiny will not be derailed in the mighty name of jesus he is not all powerful people of god and he's not all known so he really needs to rely on dirty tactics and strategies and because of that, 
traps are very heavy on his tool and his arsenal. And he is very aggressive in driving his agenda. He is very aggressive. The Bible tells us that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. For us to, we do not, let's put it this way, we do, we do not empower him. But we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay. We cannot, we should not get to a point where, you know, we're preaching, you know, a Satan, 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 this, Satan, this type of message. No, because then we're, 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 we're according him with power that does not belong to him. No. But what we're hoping to do, I'm hoping to do over last sermon and this sermon is helping us not be ignorant of his devices because we get so caught up in ourselves and in the flesh a lot of people have gotten to a point where they're pretty ignorant of the devices of the enemy okay and because we can't see ahead we talked about that we're truly sometimes blind in defending ourselves but remember the battle is not yours first peter chapter 5 verse 8 says be sober minded be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. That is what the Bible says. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. We're talking about traps that are triggered by the enemy. And it's going to be like, okay, so the traps triggered by the enemy. I get it. What does this really feel like? Another Bible story coming up. Yes, um, there is power in God's word and it's important that when we're teaching, we're not teaching with our words, we're truly teaching with God's word. And so I'm going to tell you a story of a man named Job and Job has loads of, you know, it's a full book in the Bible, but we're just going to take some words from Job chapter one. Now, this is how the Bible describes the person of Job. And this is the case study we're going to explore to understand enemy trigger traps. The Bible described Job as blameless, upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. That was Job chapter 1, I believe, maybe verse 1 or 2. Dude checked all the boxes. So there's no issue of oh, temptation leading to sin here or not seeking you know, the face of God. Job checked all the boxes. When the Bible was talking about him, he checked all the boxes on himself. And, he, you know, the, the Bible even described him as a kind of father that would even proactively make service, sacrifices on behalf of all his kids in case by error any one of his kids had even sinned against God. He truly, truly was all about God. Now, in the same Job chapter 1, we now were painted a picture of Satan. And the words that we actually used was, it said Satan, after having roamed to and fro. See, again, exactly like we said, a roaring lion looking for him to devour. So Satan, after having roamed to and fro, came before God. That was the way the story was put. And frankly, he chose to cast aspersions against Job's character. God was talking about Job, about how upright he was. And, you know, Satan was like, oh, it's because you cover him with a hedge. Take away the hedge, take away, you know, and you'll see if he will not sin against you. So Job was basically casting aspersions as a snare, and as a trap against Job. And God showed that he had confidence in Job. And God basically said, you know, do what you want, just do not touch his life. See God again on the defense. Do not touch his life. And we know the story. Job lost everything. He lost his kids. He lost his home. He lost his property. He lost his servants. You know, and even in the depths, down, down there, at the bottom of the pit where he was there, his friends again came, well-meaning friends, fair quotes, and started even giving him bad counsel. Curse God and die. Like you've gotten to the real bottom of the pit. You should just let yourself die at this point in time. But we want to give God the glory that Job continued to 
seek God through his difficulties, did not fall prey to wrong counsel, and God restored everything that was extra to Job. Now, I want to make sure we understand why we're sharing the story. The whole essence of sharing the story is to paint a picture and to help you truly see by example that there are traps that is not really about you being holy. It's not really about you following God's word. You might be upright. You might be doing everything right. You might be serving God. You might be crossing your teeth, dotting your eyes, seeking your face. It's not really about of your righteousness or whatever. It was simply the enemy on the attack. Amen. And so because we're basically faced every day with all the snares and traps, we just need to understand that. The God that we serve is a God that is all-powerful, is a God that is all-knowing. And so when the enemy is trying to put those traps in places for us, I want to say this. Do not ever forget that God is in control and that even when the devil is trying to make moves against us, God can make everything work out according to his plan. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. So, when you're dealing with this kind of traps, how do you get delivered? It's very simple. I kept making reference to God, to God, to God through all this. What was, what was it that Job had in his defense? Who did Job have in his corner? He was God. My question to you is, do you have God in your corner? The number one strategy to be delivered from snares that are driven from the pit of hell by the enemy is for you to have Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Have you submitted to the authority of Jesus Christ? Is God in control of your life? Have you accepted him as Lord and Savior? Have you made Christ to be your choice? We go back to what God's word said in our Bible verse, which we read. It says, Blessed be the Lord who, it says, blessed be the Lord. Now, who has not given us as prey to be torn by their teeth? Who did not, who was it that said to Satan and said, you cannot touch Job's life? It was God. The same way from this word, God alone is the one that can make the choice and say, I will not give this person as prey to you, the teeth of the enemy. My prayer is that the Lord will stand for you and fight for you in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Psalm, um, that verse in Psalm 124 says, We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The trap is broken. We have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. What does God do? Like I said, he will not give you a spray. It's the one that even if you found yourself trapped as a result of sin, as a result of even with your own hands, is the only one that can break the trap and is the only one that can provide an escape. But for you to tap into this, you really have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior. That is the number one strategy for deliverance against the snares of the enemies, particularly those that have been put in place by the enemy and are not triggered by our own actions. The other thing I want to also help you see that okay, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my enemy, as my sorry, as my Lord and Savior. How do I get delivered also? from enemy triggered traps proactively through prayer yes proactively through prayer you know if you examine the blueprints that christ gave to us um for prayers within everything we've learned you know i went back and the holy spirit just said oh go look at the blueprints christ gave as prayer and i was like what Ooh. God loves you and I so much. This is what he says. Matthew 6, 13, 9, 9 says, in this way you should pray. Matthew 6, 13 says, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You can see already that the blueprint says there's a need for proactive prayers against temptation 
and towards the deliverance from the devices and the traps of the enemy. Proactively praying is very, very important. Now, I need to round up because I am so out of time. Psalm 91 verse 3 starts with the word surely. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the father. Remember I told you that we are not about pumping bricks on the Satan. He is not powerful, guys. God is the one that is all powerful. I'm going to repeat that till if possible I'm blue in the face. There is a surely and the sh with the word surely is an assurance and a confidence. That is the confidence you and I have as children of the most high there is a calmness and there's a hope in our spirit because of god's word that says surely he will deliver us i want you to have that confidence in god's word that there's a inherent promise that christ has made to you and i as his children that he will not forsake us he will not leave us the same shepherd, you know, when he was leaving, I says that I have not lost any that you have given to me. Is the same shepherd that is working desperately to ensure that he does not lose any one of us to the snares or the traps of the enemy. The Bible says right now he is at the side of the Father, Christ in his person, interceding for you and I. Even as we are proactively praying for ourselves, Christ is also interceding for you and I. Stand assured and have that confidence that the Lord everlasting is for you. He is not against. His word is true. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the Father. I pray for you as I round up today that King Almighty ancient of this, you will grant us strength. You will give us grace for that Lord. You will give us knowledge of your word that we might be able to jump and pass over every snake in our way. That King Almighty, that you will help us know that you are there fighting our battles for us. That you are there making a way where there seems to be no way. That you are there ordering our steps aright so we will not fall into the trap of the enemy. And that according to your word, surely, that you will deliver everyone that is listening to me. You will deliver us from the snare of the Father. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for being here with me thank you for delving into god's word unless we could go on for another hour um, on this but we're so out of time um but thank you so much i hope you're super blessed i hope you're super encouraged and i hope you you have a bounce in your steps after this a confidence knowing that surely god will deliver you take care of yourselves and have an amazing day amen and amen in jesus name you are freed from every trap in the name of Jesus. And God will help you to avoid every trap in the name of Jesus. That wonderful word has brought us to the end of today's service. I hope you have had a wonderful time in God's presence. And I hope to see you again next week. But before we close, or as we close, as always, we bless ourselves with the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 13, verse 14, and Psalm 23, verse 6. Let's read that together as we have it on the screen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Remain blessed in Jesus' name and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.